Okay, uh, let's turn our attention now to finding the zero state response or uh, the portion of the output that's due to the input waveform. It's actually independent of the initial conditions. Um, first we need to talk about the uh, unit impulse response. Um, and this is covered in section 2.3 of your textbook. Unit impulse response. And that's denoted H of T. So for our linear system, S with input x of t in our notation um, corresponding output we call y of t. In the particular case where the input is an impulse, then we call the output h of t. This is the impulse response. It's the system output when the input is an impulse delta t. Okay. So, uh, for now, in the problems we work, we're going to assume that the impulse response is given. Uh, in the textbook, he, he shows a technique for actually finding h of t from the differential equation. Uh, I'm not going to cover that. It's kind of a complicated method. Uh, later, when we get to uh, coverage of the talking about the transfer function, we'll learn how to find the impulse response from the transfer function, uh, or in other words, learn how to find the impulse response um, uh, using circuit analysis. So now that we have the impulse response, we can uh, turn to finding the zero state response. Okay. Again, this is related to what you called the possibly the force response or the particular solution in your differential equations class. And it, it's a little different. Um, the approach we'll take you know, if you recall, for, for finding a particular solution in differential equations, um, you had to find, uh, you often had to guess at a particular solution. Well, w the approach we'll take, which does involve convolution, which you've run into in the past, um, uh, allows us to actually f find, or at least come up with a, a formula for the output for any input. Okay. So, uh, recall I want to first go through the derivation of the convolution integral. Um, recall, based on the sampling property of the impulse, that we can write x of t as an infinite sum or integration of shifted impulse impulses, so t minus tau. Uh, d tau. It seems a little strange to express a, a x of t like this, but uh, we'll use this expression to show that for a linear time invariant system, uh, we can calculate the output via uh, convolution. So again, recall for our, our system, y of t, our notation is it performs some transformation on the input signal x of t, and so in this case our system operates on this integral expression, x of tau delta t minus tau d tau. Okay. Now if the system is linear, then we can uh, exchange our system operation and our integration. So move this S operation inside the integral. Furthermore, X of tau is, is just a constant or a scalar with respect to time. So we can pull that outside of our system operation as well. That's a, that's a prop linearity property. So, um, we can express our output 
like this. And then finally, if the system is time invariant, um, we know what the system response to a shifted impulse is. Okay. Because we know the response to an impulse at t equals zero, we know the response to a shifted impulse is just going to be the shifted impulse response. So finally making this substitution, we get an expression for y of t, it's this integral expression, integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tau h of t minus tau. So, and if we know the impulse response of the system, and that will be given in, in the problems, then this allows us to calculate the output y of t for any input signal. Okay. This, of course, is the convolution integral. Just a, a note on terminology. We convolve x of t and h of t. Uh, when I say that, that means we do this operation. But the, the process is called convolution, where we convolve x and h. We don't convolute x with h. So um, uh, that concludes this uh, video lecture. And the next segment, we'll look at uh, several properties of the convolution integral.